Hallelujah. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, it's on. It's on. <laughs> it's on. We're in a fight now. We got to kick butt. Glory. I'm going to make it real simple tonight. It's called taking territory. Are you ready? Amen. Taking territory. If you're not taking territory, you're being taken. All glory. The moment you stop taking territory is the moment you start surrendering territory. Isn't that what the battle is over? Everything's over territory. It's over land. Look at how much Israel had to fight to take territory. There's still battles over territory. Why? Because if you have territory, you can control areas. Then you can put your own doctrines in those places and everything else. Jesus warned multiple times about taking territories. And when we're not taking territories, we're being taken. Hallelujah. It grieves my spirit when I see a Christian church sell their church to a Muslim organization. They just gave up territory. But see, they're not thinking that way. The only way they're thinking is money. And I've seen it happen. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Taking territory. <clears throat> Verse 10. You got to know this by heart. <laughs> it's only been going on for about 25 years. <laughs> Some people still don't get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak at verse 10. Finally, my brother. Finally, finally, finally. It's like a slap. Boom. Finally. Finally, wake up. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your might or your soulish might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. Some people are still getting tricked. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of territorial or wickedness in heavenly places. These are territorial spirits. Territorial. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. How many of y'all believe in first strike? Amen. Amen. If you don't strike first, you're going to get struck. Amen. These are rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in territorial places. This is a battle over territory. Did you ever notice that certain areas are more impoverished than others? That there's more addiction in places than others. That there's more prostitution in others. That there's more wealth in another place, but it doesn't mean that there's not crime there. Because these are territorial spirits that rule. I've driven from one state to another. Every time I go into Miami, man, I can sense it instantly. Boom. As soon as I get over there, who says, welcome to Demonicville. I used to know, anyways, I don't get anywhere. That's why I know it's demonic, Phil. <laughs> In Matthew 11. Three. 
taken territory. Matthew 11 and verse 11. You know, John the Baptist was taking territory. Amen. Jesus came to take territory. He, he came to not only take territory on the earth, but in the earth. He came to take territory not only in one dimension, but all dimensions. Why? So that you and I would have access to every dimension. Every dimension. In verse 11, Assuredly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers what? Violence. violence. That means there's a fight. There's a battle going on. And the violent take it by what? For You better become violent. Spiritually violent. You and I are supposed to hate evil, not pet it, and not compromise it. We're supposed to hate it. For all the prophets and the law and prophesied unto John, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has, in, has ears to hear, let him hear. Listen, there's a great battle right now. There's elections going on right now. We're to be taking those territories. Yes. And if you can vote, vote. Amen. But don't vote for somebody that's promoting abortion, same-sex marriage. This is not about a creed or color or race. It's about we know them by what they promote. Amen? Amen? The kingdom of heaven is in a battle over territory in all dimensions, on the earth, in the earth, in the universe. You and I are to be taken territory. That's why we got rescued. Amen. Numbers 33. Glory. <coughs> Numbers 33. I truly believe that if True believers would battle and take territory. We'd have more things going on. Amen. They're too busy crying out for their own pleasures instead of taking territory. In verse 50, let's speak it. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall what? Drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones. Destroy all their molded images. And demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. For I have given you the land to possess. Do you know the earth has been given to me and you? Even though Satan rules it, it's still been given to me and you. In fact, the word talks about the earth and its corruption is going to be turned over to the sons and daughters of God. It's been given to us, but we got to fight for it. And you do it through prayer. Jesus said something powerful. He says, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. And what do you bind on earth? You bind in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. These are spiritual keys given to the children of the kingdom of God. Most people don't know about the keys until they get a penetrating prayer booklet. 
And it's loaded with keys. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Now, in verse 54, And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your families. To the larger you shall give a larger inheritance, and to the smaller you shall give a smaller inheritance. There everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls to him by lot. You shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. But if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom you let remain shall be what? Irritants. <laughs> Irritants in your eyes and thorns in your sides. They shall harass you in the land where you dwell. Moreover, it shall be that I will do to you as I thought to do to them. Snap. We are required to drive out all corruption in all governmental, political, judicial, law enforcement, education, media, medical fields, businesses. That's our responsibility to drive them out. Start in your territory. Start in your city. First, start in your home. Amen. First, start in this temple. Amen. Hello, that's a territory. We're to drive them out. We're to bind, blind, mute, and deaf. Drive them out. Listen, the reason why there's arguments in families is because a demon's there. It's called spirit in the house. Hello? Jude, um, Judges, I'm sorry, chapter 2. Judges. Chapter 2. Now, in the Old Testament, they physically had to remove the people. <laughs> that had demons. In the new covenant, we can drive out the demons. Amen? We can drive them out. And if a person doesn't want to let go, they can go right with them. Amen. Judges 2, verses 1 through 4. Let's speak it. Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgag, Gilgag and Bacham and said, I led you from Egypt and brought you out to the land which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now, Egypt is a representation of the house of bondage. Every one of us was in the house of bondage before we got saved because the earth is ruled by the Babylonian Empire. Amen. And you'll find that all roads lead back to Rome. Oh, a lot of Vaticanites. Verse 2. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore, I also said, I will drive them out before you, but they shall be thorns in your side, and their God shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the children of Israel that the people lifted up their voices and did what? They wept. Again, we are to drive them out and take territory. And when we take territory, then we are to plant the kingdom, dwelling place. Amen. We plant the kingdom of God or there's going to be torment, conflict, and demonic influence that's associated with many idols. If you've gone down to any downtown and government, you will see nothing but Greek mythology over all the buildings. You will see Zeus and all kinds of other gods and goddesses, Magog and Gog and all. You'll see them all over the place. They're statues. Engraved in the buildings because the land has not been taken by the kingdom. In Acts 17,
Many politicians play Christians to get their, your votes. And then they do the opposite thing. Those are called wolves in sheep's clothing. We are probably at such the, the largest, I'm going to say, civil war. This is a civil war we're in. And it's a war between righteousness and evil. It's not about anything else. It's about righteousness and evil. And it's about those that are wisdom and those that have been taken captive in their minds. They've been taken captive. They're prisoners to deception. Again, you and I have been rescued to take territory. If you can't take territory, you can't take souls. You first must take territory, then souls can be taken for escape. Somebody get it? If somebody's in prison, they can't get out unless you take the territory. Amen? And many individuals are in prison, whether it be in prison of addiction, in prison of pornography, whatever it may be, in prison of deception, in prison of the Democratic Party. It doesn't matter. The left agenda, it's all a Luciferian agenda. The only reason why they don't want borders is because they want one world order. They're trying to destroy the country, and people don't get it. Amen. They're trying to turn this country over. That's what the de Democratic Party is about. Listen, I'm not about the political, but my father, my father said that his kingdom would come and his government would rule forever. And we're to be calling it in on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So this is not about separation between church and state. This is about church taking over the state. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 16, well, I don't get involved in politics. Well, you're a moron. <laughs> Ignorant and deceived. We're to be involved in all government or we wouldn't have so much problem. 300,000 children missing a year in this country. I can tell you about 80% of them are not adopted out. They're sacrificed, murdered, eaten, and abused by the Luciferian agenda. That's how they maintain their authority and power. There's one million children missing a year globally. Right now, our president is chasing them down. We've never had so many CEOs resign because he's given an ultimatum. This whole thing is, this whole operation, everything, the Clinton Foundation, all of these, all of these individuals are nothing but, they have been child smuggling and perverse. Look at Satan's second sin. His first one was rebellion. His second one was going into Eve, sexual, as the serpent. From that point on, it continued. Everything is involved about sex manipulation because that's where they're at. That's what they're after. Now you've got all of this stuff. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm blown away at some of the stuff that's going on now, advertisement of... Um, the gay, certain gay agendas, they're saying love is every age. Pedophiles. Love is every age. Listen, I'm not into, I, I, I hate pedophiles. Amen. These people are taken captive in their minds. And we need to pray that God looses them. Amen. You know, one is the one, and, and please understand this, because the Lord said something besides the, the, the worst sin, which is unforgivable, is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, right? 
The second one he mentioned, which was the worst, is to cause a little child to stumble. He said, it would be better than a millstone be around your neck. So do you think the devil knows this? Do you think the Luciferians know this? Of course they do. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in any of this. They believe Satan is their God. So they will shed blood to keep their position. How do you think these politicians are now millionaires, multimillionaires, when their payroll is supposed to be 100 grand a year? Yes, there were $40 million. How is that? Because they get paid off. Listen, we are in a heavy-duty war. Time's running out. And it is our responsibility to drive out and protect every political office so God sends his servants in there. Amen? Good. X 17, verse 16. Now why what? Paul waited for them at Athens. His spirit was what? Provoked. Why was his spirit provoked? Because he was in territory that wasn't taken by the kingdom yet. His spirit was provoked within him when he saw the city was given over to what? Idols. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with, all, with those who happened to be there. What was he trying to do? Paul was trying to take territory. In a certain, whatever they are, Epicurean and Stoctic philosophers encountered him and some said, what does this mean? babbler want to say others said he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them jesus and the resurrection so what was he trying to do take territory and they took him and brought him into the uh, arpagius and saying may we know what this new doctrine is of what you speak for you are bringing some strange things to our ears it's called truth Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear of something new. <laughs> then Paul stood in the midst of Arpagius and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. He, that was a nice way of saying it. He would really want to say, I believe you're all stupid. For I was passing through the, and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life breath in all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and what? Boundaries. Those are territories. Of their what? Dwellings. So that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live, move, and have our being as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Powerful. Again, Paul was provoked and irritated because of the dwelling presence of demonic influences, which was drawn by the accursed items of idols. Accursed items draw demonic activity. So these idols that they had all over the place was drawn demonic activity. And they were promoting doctrines of demons. These were all overseen by territorial spirits of Satan's kingdom in heavenly places. They were never driven out. And territory was never taken until Paul began to proclaim. In Mark 16.
Aleluya. Mark 16. We didn't spend more time in prayer and warfare. Instead of begging for a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? I don't know the rest of the song. Janis Joplin, who died of heroin. She got her Mercedes Benz, though. Unfortunately, she probably woke up in hell. The Benz didn't save her. Mark 16, 16. Oh, glory, am I there? No. Okay. That's why I didn't look familiar. <laughs> Mark 16, 16. Is everybody there yet? Amen. Good. Let's speak it. He who believes, what's the word believe mean? Oh. To follow. And is baptized will be saved. Isn't that wild? He who follows and baptizes will be saved. Now, there's the baptism of blood, which is representation of water. You don't have to be baptized in water to be saved. Amen? That's a bunch of religious stuff. It's, it's, a, it's ritual, but it's also symbolic. I suggest everyone get baptized in water because what you're proclaiming to the, to the demonic forces is that you've accepted the death and resur resurrection of Jesus Christ and you've been washed by the blood. Amen? Amen? But when you repented of your sins, as you repent of your sins every single day, you get washed by the blood. Amen. And of course, to believe means to follow. So those who are washed by the blood, stay washed by the blood and follow, are saved. Amen. Amen. But those who do not believe are what? Condemned. They're condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they are what? Cast out demons. They will drive out demons. For what? For sport? I, I like it. It's a good sport. Let's go out and drive out demons. Praise God. Let's go hunting. But it's to take territory. Why? The first territory that needs to be taken is us. The temple. The temple body. That's why we do deliverance. There's people that are still struggling with stuff because they've never been through deliverance or even self-deliverance. They've still got perverseness and bondage and fear and anxiety, stress, and all these other goofy things that the powers of darkness are still on. So when, there's a lot of believers that don't believe they can have a demon. It's just plum dumb. Jesus cast out spirits, demons out of believers. All the whole New Testament is written to the church of God, the believers. And he says, and in my name they will drive out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Hello, that's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they will take up serpents. That doesn't mean you're going to dance with serpents like some of these other goofy religious things. And they would drink anything deadly. It doesn't mean you're going to test God, siphon your car, or drink cyanide. Because the word says you can drink anything. Because you will die. He did give us wisdom. Amen. And it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will what? Recover. Because why? We are driving out demonic forces. Of all sicknesses, diseases, we are taking territory. But we must take territory right here first. Because a house divided will not stand. Amen. If you ever get an opportunity, look in the mirror. See what's in your mirror. If you see something in your eyes and it winks at you, get rid of it. Amen. Seriously. And before I was saved, I used to frighten myself if I looked too long in the mirror. <laughs> ah! Did you see that? Who was I talking to? 
Hallelujah. We are to cast out, drive out. The first territory is the temple body, the soul. Is everybody okay? We're out to drive out to escape. Oh, glory. Mark 3. Mark 3, verse 23. And Jesus called them to himself, and he said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, it cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house. Now, what is a strong man? He's a high-ranking demon. And the house is a temple. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. And surely I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the sons of men, and whoever blasphemes, they may utter, blasphemies they may utter, but he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. It is our authority to bind and loose. We are to bind the strong man. He's a high-raking demon. So no matter where you go, you can bind a strong man. Lord, I ask that you dispatch your angels ahead of me today as I bind a strong man wherever I step in. And wherever I step today, Lord, I decree in the name of Jesus that your fragrance will be released, your presence will be released, conviction will be released, and salvation will be released in that atmosphere. I take territory in the name of Jesus. I don't care who owns that place. My father owns it all. Hallelujah. Binding the strong man to take the first territory, which is the temple body. 2 Timothy chapter 2. That's why we do warfare in praise and worship, calling destructive fire down and principalities and powers of darkness. You know, Friday we had that full moon eclipse, which was the longest eclipse. It wasn't seen here, it was seen in Asia and Europe. You know, the demonic servants of Satan's kingdom were in a frenzy. They were doing as much sacrifices as they could. That's why we interrupted many by our warfare Friday night. You, may you won't know until you go home how many children, how many individuals were rescued, cut loose, and escaped by our warfare Friday night. But they were thousands, thousands globally. You got to remember, Satan rules the whole earth. He rules the whole earth. We're outnumbered, but we're not outpowered. Amen. Amen. We may be outnumbered, but we're not outpowered. A thousand will fall at our side, and 10,000 at our right hand. We have dominion. You just got to use it, and you got to know it. Because if you don't know it, they know you don't know it. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21. 
Therefore, if what? Anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also useful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who what? Call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. So you got to be careful of your associations. Associations bring what? Impartations. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But avoid what? Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their senses and do what? Escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So it's our responsibility to take territory so individuals can escape. I pray every single day for a global Lord rescue those who've been taken captive. Those have been taken captive in their minds by spirits of homosexual, lesbian, transgender, and pedophile spirits, murdering and sacrificed spirits, Luciferian spirits, the left agenda. Those that have been taken care of, those, those have been abducted for satanic ritual abuse, sexual abuse, sacrifice, torture, murder, and falsely imprisoned in every country, nation, continent, and island globally. Father, dispatch your angels and your military to them. Bring confusion in the enemy's camp. Expose their wicked deeds. Destroy their works. Arrest who you need to rest and rescue these individuals. Muzzling the mouth of the voice of the stranger. Opening their ears, eyes, and heart to receive the way they've escaped. That they may enter into your home to be healed, to be delivered, and to be discipled. In the name of Jesus. In every country, nation, and continent, and island, globally. That's just one of my prayers. It's warfare, it's warfare, it's warfare to take territory. It's not me, myself, and I. You get dressed first with the armor of God because you got to get positioned and dressed up, filled up before you can do armor, before you can do battle. Amen? Listen, lives are dependent on us. Amen. You weren't rescued to just save your own blessed assurance. You and I were rescued to save the world. We carry the mission of Jesus. Oh, many are under mind control. Again, through addictions and bondages and inherited curses, witchcraft, lust. And they can't break free until they enter territory that has been taken by the kingdom of Christ. Some of them can't get free until they come out of that territory or that territory has been taken. So that's why God has established ministries. In other words, this territory has been taken. Amen. It's been taken by praise and worship. We drove out the spirits. If you didn't worship, you carry the rest of them. They got to go somewhere. So if you, did, if you refuse to worship, refuse to lift your hands and praise God, you're a carrier. They got to go somewhere. And if they're not willing to leave here, they're going to go into you. You'll either be filled with the spirit of God or the spirit of demons. But that's why God has established places. Many people walk on our campus and can sense. They walk in the stores and they can sense a difference in the atmosphere. Because the territory has been taken and maintained. Once you take it, you got to maintain it. When they took Iraq, they didn't maintain it. This country has taken many territories and didn't maintain them. They turned them over. But because it was world run by globalists, it wasn't about that. It was about sacrifice. You think the Twin Towers came down by mistake? No way. That opened a dimensional port from all that bloodshed. And it's still going on. Amen? Amen. Churches should be a place of freedom. Not a place of bondage. 
should be free in the spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Amen? And when we come together and fellowship, that's why the word says forsake not to assemble. We got an opportunity for God to not only release his word of truth into the atmosphere, and then you and I can absorb it into our soul. And light penetrates darkness, drives out demonic forces. You may be dealing with oppression and heaviness. Man, you start worshiping the Lord, whew, they flee. In John 17, Oh, happy day. Glory. In verse 6. Is everybody there? Amen. I have manifested your name to men whom you have given me out of the world. They were, they were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are for you, are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have now surely, and know surely I have come forth from you. They have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours. And yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from who? The evil one, the ruler of this earth. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your what? Truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. To do what? Take territory. And as for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their words that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you have give, gave me may be with me whom, where I am and that they may behold my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. That was Jesus decreeing over me and you. That the world may know him through us. And he sent us to take territory. Go to Ephesians 2.
Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1, <clears throat> Ephesians 2 and verse 1, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the what? The course of this world, according to the prince of power of air. In other words, he's got control. What does he have control of right now? How about all internet, radio stations, all communications, all transportations? The word says in 2 Corinthians 4 that he's called the God of this world. He's called the prince of this world. He controls all the economic. He controls TV, he controls all education. The only way that we get in is to take territory to get truth in places. He says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of error, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, because he's taken them under mind control, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind or of the thoughts. And we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. For by grace, which is his plan, you've been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. For what? Of you? To take territory. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Very powerful. Go to Daniel 10 for a moment. Daniel 10. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Daniel was praying. And he saw a vision. In verse 7 it says, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them. So they fled. <laughs> they booked and hid themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me and I retained no strength and yet I heard the sound of his words and I and while I heard the sound of his words I was in a deep sleep on my face and with my face to the ground suddenly a hand touched me which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands and and he said to me oh Daniel man greatly beloved understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you while he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you what? Set your heart to understand. And did what? Humbled yourself. Does everybody get those two things? Set your heart to understand and humbled yourself. Before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Anyone want an answer from God? He, that's what he said. Get understanding and humble yourself. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which there was a principality. He was a principality over Persia, where Daniel was at. He said he withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, who, which, the archangel, 
one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So the angel of the Lord was bringing Daniel a message through prayer, got held up in the heavenlies by the prince of power of air, the principalities. Does everybody understand that? And he couldn't defeat all of them. He had to wait for Michael to come and assist him because he was the messenger to bring Daniel a message. Now, unfortunately, at that time, Daniel didn't have the authority to bind and loose. We do. So that's where you should be binding and loose, binding every principality, power of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places and territorial spirits that are coming against your prayers and the angels working on your behalf. What are you doing? You're taking territory. You're assisting in them while they're assisting you. He was left there alone and held up for how many days? 21 days. For them, it was nothing. For me and you, it was 21 days. Now I came to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. In other words, there are geographical locations of demonic hierarchy. We are to drive them out through penetrating prayers, binding them, blinding them, muting them, bringing confusion in the enemy's camp. In Psalm 18. Psalm 18, verse 37. You know, it's one of the weakest areas of individuals as Christians is prayer. It's one of the things where the enemy gets individuals, they quit in prayer. They, they don't finish prayer. Oh, Lord, bless me, guide me, and thank you. You will be done on earth and in heaven. See ya. Warfare. If you don't strike first, you'll be struck. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. People become religious. Oh, God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows how crooked it is. He knows how wicked it is. He knows how lazy we can become. He knows how compromising we can become. He knows how selfish we can become. Believe me, people's hearts can turn a second away from God. It doesn't take much to turn a person's heart away from God. But it takes much to keep a person's heart towards God. In verse 37, let's speak it. I have pursued my what? Enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. I have wounded them so that they could not rise. They have fallen under my feet, for you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind, and I cast them out like dirt in the streets. So what did he do? He drove them out. He pursued his enemy. Look at whatever you're being attacked with, pursue it till it's gone. Pursue it till it's gone. You fight till it's out of there. Amen? We're to drive out, take territory. And all state, local, city officials, education. Do you know that? Check this out. Oregon approved transgender showers and bathrooms in public schools. Can you imagine... High schools? Public high schools, right? Yeah. Can you imagine sending your kid to a public high school and it's mandatory that they go take a shower with the opposite sex? Somebody get this? Like yeah, yeah, and it was approved by a judge and he says, if you don't like it, go to a private school. Come on, think about this. This was just today. Things are getting crazy. 
I had to hold myself back. I'm calling fire on this moron. The Lord said, forgive him and bless him, and he'll bring the fire on him. So I did that. <laughs> Bathrooms, showers, in high school. Forget it. Go to Leviticus 19. Take in territory in your homes. Be careful who you let in your home. Don't get soulish. Hey, look, we want to rescue everyone, right? If they want to be rescued. But if they're not willing to submit what's in your home, don't let them stay there. You come and stay in my home, you're going to come to church, you're doing Bible study, you're doing whatever. Amen. You come on the Lord's property, you're going to do the same thing. Amen. We'll see ya. Leviticus 19, 26. Let's speak it. You shall not eat anything with blood. In other words, you're not supposed to drink blood, huh? Well, nor shall you practice divination or soothsaying. You shall not shave around your sides, of course, this is Old Testament, of your head, nor shall you disfigure the edges of your beard. Now, here's some good stuff. You shall not make any what? Cuttings, Cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Do you know how many children are out there right now that are cutters? There's many people that have cut. They lived in, they, they, they have cutting parties. They have no idea that they're drawn to my activity. And it's bringing a false, a false peace. Because afterwards it brings torment. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoos. Or any markings on you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a harlot. Lest the land fall into harlotry and the land become full of wickedness. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence, my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Give no regard to what? Mediums and familiar spirits. Don't seek after them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor in the presence of the old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. In other words, again, because ter territory wasn't taken, people fall under these influences. Schools, look at what happens in schools where kids go. Man, if that school is not, ta if the, the school has but not been taken by Christ, it's influenced. All places. We're to be taking territories in homes, cities, jobs, schools, and principalities, and and all governing everything, at your, especially at your job. Start taking territory. No warfare, no victory. I'm going to close it, Romans 8. Don't give up. Keep fighting. And don't let your feelings dictate. Amen. People let their feelings dictate. Well, I didn't feel anything when I prayed. Well, come here. I'll let you feel something. <laughs> then you'll have to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Smack you over the head with the Bible. Romans 8. Verse 36. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, his love for me and you is constant. But the problem is, is the devil gets involved and breaches our love for him. And we don't even realize it. Because he puts idols in our life. You know, the word talks about first love. Jesus rebuked them because they lost his, their first love. You know, in true reality, your true first love should be him. Because it is the purest love. It is the most awesome love. It's only through the love that is connected with him can you love others. Amen. Other than that, it usually turns into lust. Amen? But you got to make that connection. You got to be connected to his presence. And you got to fight to get connected. Because if you're not a fire... You won't be connected. Amen? Take territory. Don't be a wimp. Be a warrior. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray for each and every one to rise up. Stand up. Man up and woman up for the kingdom of Christ. Lord, I pray boldness in each and every one and the seed that's been imparted in them. Lord, give them night vision and see things through that they may take territory first in themselves, in their own atmosphere, in their own homes, and then in their jobs. Remind them, Lord. Remind everyone in there about taking territory in all political and government, especially during these elections. We are to be the government, not Satan's kingdom. And to God be the glory. In Jesus' name. Anybody said amen? amen? Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>